welcome our lead pastor, Jeff Englehart, as he comes to minister. Good morning. For a moment, I saw you in the, in the balcony. Good to see you this morning. And all those that are here, glad you're here. I'm going to say this again. I'm going to ask you every time I get up here. What are you expecting for this year? What are you expecting in your heart? Huh? What are you expecting this year? Come on, what are you expecting? More. Are you expecting more of good things, bad things, ugly things, good things? I'm expecting good things. I'm expecting godly things. Amen? Absolutely. Life has been described in so many, um, so many series of choices. Our life goes through so many choices, and, and um, that's pretty true. Obviously, there are times when our lives are impacted by the things that we didn't choose. Isn't that right? But other times, our life's impacted by the choices that we make. Dr. Eva Krakow, Kroc, uh, a lecturer at the University of uh, Leicester in, uh, excuse me, in, in the UK, says that our brain is making upward of 35,000 decisions each day. We are deciding what to do, what to wear, what to eat for breakfast, if we have time for a shower that you know you need to take, uh-huh, uh, whether you're going to talk to someone or, or if you're going to avoid someone, how you're going to talk to someone, how you're, going to, how you're going to be that day, how you're going to act that day. I mean, it goes on and on and on. It says if you're going to pray on the way to work, if you're going to pray in the shower, if you're going to pray at all, God bless you. Hey, hey, Michael, Pastor Michael. You hand that to my wife. That's her tea that I stole. And... Uh, Isn't that awful? <laughs> At least I'm truthful. Anyhow, so there's all these things that are, that are the choices that we're constantly making. So we're making thousands of choices every day. The choices affect us and they affect others. So this is the question for us today. How can we expect to make good choices? How can we expect to make good choices? Jesus teaches in the Bible that about a tool that he gives to us, and it's called wisdom. Everybody say wisdom. wisdom. It's actually a tool that's given to us, but that tool, she is brought to us through the person of the Holy Spirit, through the person of the Holy Spirit. James 1.5 says, if any one of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. Proverbs 4, 6 says, Do not forsake wisdom, and she will protect you. Love her, and she will watch over you. When we believed on Jesus and invited him into our life's journey, at that moment, the Holy Spirit came into our lives. The Holy Spirit the Bible says, is our teacher, our comforter, our counselor, our guidance. Everything that we need in life, he's dunamis power. He is everything that we need to live this life and to live it guilt-free along with living a fearful, free life. Did you hear what I just said? So many times we go through life doing things afraid. We're not quite sure how this, this is going to happen or oh, I don't, know how I, can, I don't know if I can do that. I, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can do that. And, and you, you start, so he's our comforter. He's our teacher, the Holy Spirit. He's the one that renews our spirit, enlightens our mind, convinces our conscience who and what we are in Christ Jesus and helps us discern truth and leads us into all wisdom. Say all wisdom. Ephesians chapter 1, 17 through 18 says, Ask the Holy Spirit wisdom and revelation, and your eyes will be enlightened with his knowledge. Huh. Now, the Holy Spirit is not an it. He's not a they. He's not male, nor is he female. Genesis chapter 1, 26 through 27 says, God said, let us make humankind in our image after our likeness and then God created humankind in his own image 
In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So both male and female reside in God. And so both male and female reside in the person of the Holy Spirit. But many times when you're reading the Bible and you're, you're seeing both genders because you know what? When you're hurt, you skin your knee, you don't feel good, you want to go to mama. Isn't that right? When you don't feel good, you want mama. You, you want that motherly touch in your life. God has that motherly touch. In the same time, if you, if, if you, want, if you want someone to be stern, you want some, you, you, you want some you know, wrestling time, or, or you want protection, you're usually going to run towards daddy. Do you know what I mean? There are, things, there are things about the masculine and the feminine that both reside in God, and they reside in the person of the Holy Spirit. You have heard it said that we are the sum total of the choices that we've made. And we're oftentimes defined by those choices that we make. Choices are important for youth because they affect their future. But hear me, adults. It's more important for us as adults because guess what? We have more responsibility. We have usually a family and we have children and we have grandchildren. We are at a different place in our lives that the choices that we make are affecting generations behind us. Did you hear what I just said? So they're important. Numbers 14, chapter 14, verse 18 says this, the Lord is slow to anger, abounding in love and forgiving sin and rebellion. Then they slip in the word yet. He does not leave the guilty unpunished. Now I want you to underline that word guilty. He does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children for the sins of the parents to the third, fourth generation. Now, the word guilty is there, is the one that has never said, Lord, come into my life's journey. I need you. Forgive me of my sins. Because the Bible says that once you ask for forgiveness, you're forgiven. And he cast your, your sin into the sea of forgetfulness as far as the east is from the west. How many say amen for that? But there's something in numbers that teaches us about a generational curse that wants to hang on in our lives many times and I know that we all thought well you know God's good yes God is good but he's also he's also a just God and notice what I said it says to those that are guilty the reason he places that in scriptures because he knows that there are things that we tell our kids don't do but then they see us doing it oh come on we tell our kids don't do this but then they see us do what we're telling them not to do. I'm not saying that's an everyday occurrence, that, that we're not doing that all the time, but I'm saying that there's something that happens that when you tell your kids, don't do as I'm doing, do as I say, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. We reproduce who we are, not what we say. Huh? Now I want us to think about this for a moment. I want us to think about how those things get passed down. They're called addictions. They get passed down, don't they? Think about it. There's alcoholism. It gets passed down. Infidelity, many times, gets passed down. Divorce. If your family's been through a divorce, I mean, it, it's usually passed down because in the back of your mind, you think, oh, well, I'll, I'll, make, I'll get married, but hey, I can get divorced. It's all right. Divorce is okay. I'm, I'm telling this today, it keeps going. Then there's sexual abuse. There's sexual addictions. There's abuse of behavior. There's overeating. There's eating not the right foods that get, that, you know, and uh, things just keep getting passed down to our children and to our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. And God is saying, I want you to use wisdom in your parenting. I want you to use wisdom right where you're at today oh come on somebody <clears throat> thank you I appreciate that so much they're having problems with the lighting Ephesians chapter 5 teaches us three ways to make good decisions and you're going to want to write these three things down three things let me read Ephesians chapter 5 verse 17 
It's, excuse me, 15 through 17. It says this, be very careful then how you live, not as the unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Careful here in the Greek means this. It means to be on the lookout, just to be on the lookout. We need to be careful in life. We need to be on the lookout. You know, wisdom is making you wise. It's making you be on the lookout. You know what I'm saying? You don't just drive into a seedy neighborhood, get out of your car, and start walking the neighborhood at 3 a.m. You know what I'm saying? There, th- th- I mean, that's just not wisdom, is it? But when you're on, when you're on the lookout, when you're being careful, you're being, on, you're being on the lookout. So be careful. <clears throat> Don't live like fools, it says. What is the wise thing to do? Now, how close, you know, this is what always gets me. Many times will people ask for my advice. And the reason they're asking my advice is they really want to know how close to the edge can they get in life? How close can I get on the fence of life? How close can I walk on this edge and not, and still be okay with God? That's really what they're asking me. How, how dangerous to the edge can I get without losing an in with God? Hmm? I don't know about you, but I'm a self-preservationist. I like to stay far away from the edge, but I'm not afraid of a challenge. Hmm? And many times what ends up happening, it kind of goes like this. Apostle Jeff, I'm in a financial mess. They told me that if I bought this, I would have a year to pay it off. So I bought it. Two months later, I lost my job. Then they compounded all the interest that they could get. And now it's more than I can even afford. You see, my friends, that, that, that's really a snare to bring you to the edge. But one thing else could happen, one other choice could happen that could lead you going over the edge. Do you understand what I'm saying? Be cautious with it. Be careful with it. Someone says, well, I can go to the party. I'll only have one drink. I'm sorry, my friend, if you have alcoholism in your family... If you're a recovering alcoholic, you know you can't have even one drink because you'll just spiral right back down to where you were before. And you'll end up in the same messes, the same fights, the same mess as you were before. The same thing goes with gambling. The same thing goes, I mean, there's so many things that the enemy wants to use against you in your life And God is saying, I want you to come out from that. I want you to stay away from the edge, but you've got to use wisdom. You've got to use wisdom. Someone said to me recently, they said, well, you know, uh, pot's legal. It's legal. And I said, yeah, it is legal. I said, even the Bible says that there are things that are lawful, but they're not good for you. And I don't care what they say, pot's a gateway drug. I've seen more people move from, from pot to acid or from pot to coke, from pot to crack, and now they're dead. Just this last week alone, two overdosed and died this week alone. Two people that we knew, that we were connected to. And I was like, they just wanted to have fun. It's called living too close to the edge, and now their life is gone. You have to use wisdom in life. You have to use wisdom in life. And by the way, pot's not legal. 
if you're under 21. Parents, pot's not legal if you're under 21. I'm amazed at how many parents bring something home for their kids so their kids can party with them. That's the most asinine thing I've ever heard in my life. Let's start you down the road of addiction. Let's get your life as messed up as mine. I'll get off my high horse in just a moment. Apostle Paul said everything in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23, everything is permissible, but it's not beneficial. It's not beneficial. Yeah, you think, you know, even buying the beers for your kids so they can party at home with you so I can watch them. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the responsible thing to do. So you can watch them. I'm telling us, you're getting too close to the edge with some of the decisions that we make, and we have to stop making these kind of decisions. We have to stop making the decisions to let our kids just run off and do what they want to. We gotta stop making the decisions of, let, of just giving our kids the things that we didn't have growing up so they can enjoy life. You're ending up actually destroying our kids rather than helping our kids. Getting too close to the edge. So, this is the amazing thing about wisdom. The wisdom allows you to see time in three dimensions. Wisdom allows you to see time in three dimensions. The Holy Spirit's gonna show you in three dimensions every time, and here it goes. The first one is through your past experiences. These are the three things you're gonna wanna write down. Your past experiences. In light of my past experience, is this the wise thing for me to do? Your story gives you the ability to make a wise decision, meaning that you're gonna learn from your mistakes. People that keep finding themselves in the same position over and over and over and over again realize they're not in a good situation. Huh? They're not learning from their mistakes. They're not being wise to their past. So every one of us, say that with me, I'm going to be wise to my past. See, when you're wise to your past, you'll stop making those same stupid mistakes. You'll stop making those same choices over and over again that lead to destruction, that lead to hurt. I, 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 love, I love how the Holy Spirit gives us one scripture, and from that one scripture, he shows us three points for our life to say, you know what? There's wisdom here. Number two is this. He's going to show you in your present circumstances. In your present circumstances, don't freak out because there's always opportunities that God wants to show you by his spirit. There's always going to be opportunities around you and in front of you that God is going to show you, hey, this is the opportunity I'm giving you right now. But if your senses are dull, and if you're, if you're still back in your past, or if you're still looking behind you in regret, it'll actually rob you from making the present choice, the choice right now in the present circumstance. Number three is this, future hope and dreams. What choice am I going to make today that will impact my future? Are you thinking that every day? Or are you just looking for the weekend so you can go out and do your thing again on the weekend? Or are you just looking for that one more step, oh, I can't wait till school's done, or I can't wait till work is done so I can meet up with my buddies or my friends and so we can hang out and do the same stupid things? How is that impacting your future? You see, the things that we're doing today, we have to be focused about for our future to say, where are we headed for our future? If you don't like the things that you have today, it's because you've gotten to the same rat wheel 
of doing the same thing over and over again without planning for your future. And God is saying, I'm giving you wisdom. I'm showing you mistakes from your past. I'm showing you opportunities right now in your present. And through my wisdom, I'm going to show you to make every day count towards your future. And I love this about God, that he always gives you hope. He always brings you hope. He always brings you direction. He always shows you things that are yet to come. Matter of fact, the Bible says that he will show you things that are yet to come. That's where his will comes in. So, <clears throat> I, know, I know, you know, the older, that, the older that I become, excuse me, the more mature that I become. What I'm realizing about life is there are certain little things that come up. Oh, you know what? There was that investment that time that came my way, and I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't grab onto that at the time. I, I let it go, and, and if I'd have done that, mm, I wouldn't be your pastor today. No, no, I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. I would still be your pastor, but... I mean, you know what I'm saying? There's things that come up in your past and you'll say, you know what? Man, I regret, I missed that. I regret that. I, but you know what? Life doesn't have to be full of those regrets. You learn from those mistakes so you can find the opportunities in your present. And you start working now towards the things in your future. I don't care how young, I don't care how old you are. There are things you can do now preparing you for your future. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 through 17. It says this. Be very careful then how you live, not as the unwise, but as wise. You see, that's your past. Because you know what? Aren't we wiser today than we were yesterday? Aren't we wiser today than we were because of our past mistakes? That's right. It goes on to say this in the scripture, making the most of every opportunity. That's our present time. Making the most of every opportunity. That's right now. Then it goes on to say, because the days are evil, therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. The Lord's will is always futuristic, bringing you along to the place that he's taken you to. Morning by morning, his mercies are new every morning. Every day, he says, if you seek me, you'll find me. If I talk to the Lord this morning, many times he doesn't just talk to me about my day, he talks to me about my tomorrow. Sometimes he talks to me about my today. But there'll be many times he's talking to me about my tomorrows. He's always giving me deposits of hope for my future. He's always depositing hope in my, in my heart for my kids and for my grandkids. God's always depositing hopes in your future. I love how practical God's word is. The will of the Lord is the first through his word and it's the second through prayer meaning you know the will of God when you're reading his word when you're reading his word you're understanding God's will you're understanding his ways you're understanding his character so that way when you pray and you're hearing you're hearing you're hearing something in your mind sounds like you but it's giving you good advice, it's giving you wisdom. It's not leading you astray because it's based on God's word and you are being led in that manner. You're like, yeah, God. Yeah, God, you're doing great. Thank you so much. I know this is you. This sounds like you because I just read your word and it sounds like you. I know this is you. But can I say this? If you're trying to pray, without reading God's word, 
you don't know who you're listening to. What? I'm praying to God. Yeah. But if you're praying, if you're praying selfish prayers, if you're praying through your wants and your desires, then it's your wants and your desires that are answering you, and it's not God. Just ask the prophet Naaman and his talking mule. Hmm? See, I can't, ex- I can't stress enough how important reading God's word is in your life. Your word and your prayer life have to be balanced out. They've got to be balanced out. And if you're reading the word, Old Testament is great for the stories to see a bunch of imperfect people doing stupid things, God redeeming them, and I think, oh, thank God, there's hope for me, right? But you live in the New Testament. That's where your address is as a believer. It's the New Testament, starting, starting in John. That's the, New, that's the New Testament. The book of Matthew, great book, but Matthew was called to speak to the Jews, So the verbiage is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a little bit different. His interpretations are going to be a little bit different. They're going to be for the Jewish people to understand because he was called to the Jewish people. But then you've got Mark and John and Luke. You've got the book of Acts. You've got Romans. You've got Corinthians and Ecclesiastes. I mean, you've got all these great New Testament books that are there to show you how to live a godly life. I love Colossians. It shows you your position in Christ. So press in to what God's word is in your life. Press into what God's word is. <clears throat> Romans, I, I like what Romans. Well, let me just say this. I think every one of us know in this room that sin doesn't lead to peace. It doesn't produce joy in your life. Oh, it might feel good for the moment until they walk out the door or until you walked out the door, got in your car, smashed it. You, you, know, you know what I'm saying? There, there are so many things that sin feels good for the moment. But the Bible says that the enemy is looking for whom he can devour. He's the one that's looking to devour you. And Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. Amen? I like what Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says. It says, sin leads to death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Our eternal life is found in Christ. Our strength is found in Christ. Our joy is found in Christ. That doesn't mean that you can't do things and have fun. You can do things. You can have fun. I'm just saying, stay away from the edge. Matter of fact, there's a scripture that says, one foot in the world and one foot in godliness You can't have one foot in the world and one foot in godliness. It, it, it doesn't work in your life. The Bible says, because a double-minded man is unstable then in all of his ways. If I'm here one moment and then I'm over here one moment, well then guess what? I'm going to be unstable in all my ways. But when I'm in Christ, I can have that stable walk with him. I can have that stable walk with him. This is my question for you today. This week, I, I want you to apply wisdom to your life. I want you to apply wisdom. I want you to expect the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom. In your prayer time, I want you to say, Holy Spirit, I'm expecting your wisdom in my life today. When I open up the Word of God, because the Bible says He's my teacher, He's my counselor, I said, God, I thank you that today I'm expecting you to bring me revelation. 
I'm expecting you to teach me. I'm expecting you to, to show me what I need and the way that I need to live today. I'm expecting that from you today, Holy Spirit. Did you hear what I just said? I'm saying I'm expecting that. Don't just open up God's word and try to read his word without first having a conversation with the Holy Spirit to be the teacher that morning while you're reading. Because he's the one that's going to lead you and guide you and direct you into all truth. And I'm telling you, when you expect him, you're going to experience him in a brand new way. When you expect the Holy Spirit to bring you wisdom, he's, when I said, Holy Spirit, I need wisdom. I need wisdom. I want some scriptures about wisdom. And, and sure, Google has all kinds of scriptures about wisdom. It'll bring me up all the scriptures on wisdom, and there's several of them. But all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit didn't take me to those scriptures. He said, Jeff, he said, I want you to turn to Ephesians chapter 5. I read the whole chapter. And I said, what? And he said, go back to 15. And right there he showed me in just a short time, three things for life, for wisdom. Once again, remember what they are. Past experiences, present circumstances, seeing the opportunities, and future hopes and dreams. God wants you to always think in those three things. What did I do the last time? What's before me now? And what can I do that's heading towards my future? That's wisdom. I know people think that wisdom is going to college. I've been there, done that. And yes, you can, you can gain knowledge. But how many know that I've met some pretty stupid people that have knowledge I don't mean that in a bad way. I really don't mean that in a bad way. I, I, ju I just mean that um, some of my colleagues, even that I went to college with, um, we could be so book smart that we can be stupid. Do you know what I'm saying? Knowledge and wisdom are not the same thing. Wisdom proceeds and it goes beyond it goes beyond knowledge and I think of King Solomon what is the one thing he asked God for it was wisdom and with wisdom he was able to rule and reign and with wisdom he became the wealthiest king there ever was all because he asked God for wisdom wisdom isn't knowledge Sometimes wisdom is knowing how to get knowledge. Sometimes wisdom is bringing the right people around you that have the knowledge. Sometimes wisdom is figuring out a situation and you go to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, what about the situation? And all of a sudden he gives you something that seems so foolish and yet it turns out just right because the Bible says, it's the foolish things that confound the wise. Wisdom's important. Wisdom's important. Let's look at these questions really quick. What are we going to do this week? Press into the Holy Spirit. Expect wisdom. For some, it means to stop gossiping. Thank God, I, 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 don't, I don't see a lot of that in our, in our church, but I put that up for, there for online folks that are maybe tuning in or checking us out. But I will say this, just as gossip hurts, the wrong words coming out of your mouth about your life, about your family, about your friends, about your workplace, are just as damning. And they hold just as much of an effect as gossip does. So guard your mouth, right? Let us all guard our lips this week. For some, it may mean to cut up your credit cards. Oh, amen, somebody. Go have plastic surgery today. Grab the scissors out of the drawer. Yeah.
For the other ones, it says put accountability partner on your cell phone or your com- computer so you're not being led by porn. You think you're the one that is leading your porn addiction? No, you're being led by porn. You're the one that's in the addiction and you've got a nose ring in your, in your nose and you're being led. You're being led by your addiction of porn. Going home and purging your house of donuts and alcohol. Oh, come on, somebody. Now, I, I read all this list here. I read this list here. I, I know that some of you are saying you're throwing me under the bus. Listen, I'm hanging onto the back bumper myself of this bus. I'm telling you. You know, when, when God showed me these three simple things, I was just like, yeah, what are things am I doing before I'm doing, you know, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. And I started realizing I got, there's some things I'm doing. There's some things that, that I'm taking care of. There's some things that I'm, you know, um, I think yesterday, um, I was, I was, I've been ill for a month, for a month. I know every healing scripture. I've quoted every healing scripture. I've been praying. I've been declaring and, um, and been messing with this upper respiratory thing. And, and then I started feeling good last Sunday and, um, my beautiful wife came home and, and, um, and she came down with the flu on Monday. I can't really do that by herself. No, I, I got to take on the flu too. And, uh, and uh, so <laughs> it's been a month from hell. That's all I'm going to say to you. But I will say this. In the midst of all that, God challenged me while I was ill. And he said, Jeff, I, want you to give, I don't want you to have sugar today. So for three days... I didn't have sugar, nothing sugar, nothing sweet. No, I mean, I just stayed away from it all. And you know what? <clears throat> and the very next day when that was done, our doorbell rang and someone door dashed us Panera bread, all these cinnamon rolls and, and muffins. And I said, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to bless them or say, Satan, get thee behind me. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not sure which one it is, but <laughs> I like my wife's answer to it. She just cut up the little muffin four little pieces and handed me a little piece. I thought, that? thank you, honey. She's thinking of me. Isn't that nice? <clears throat> yeah. Some things we've got to purge out of our lives in order to expect different results. Let's purge some things out of our lives this year to expect better results. Let's expect the Holy Spirit to bring us wisdom so we are wise people walking forward into 2024, being wise, being wiser about life, about godliness, about our friends, our family, our workplaces, our schools, our jobs, our community. Let's just walk in this year being wiser. But you first of all have to expect it. And if you expect him, you'll experience him. Amen? Amen. Stand up with me today. Praise the Lord. I would be amiss if I, if I dismissed us today and didn't ask if there was one person here today that have never invited Jesus Christ into your life journey. You just never invited Jesus into your life's journey. And if that's you today, all you have to do is simply say, Jesus, I believe in who you are. Come into my life. Forgive me my sins. And guess what? At that moment, he comes into your life and he enters by the person of the Holy Spirit into your life. And now you have access to wisdom 24-7. Wisdom is going to be there all the time. 
Wisdom is going to be there to lead and guide and direct you into all truth, every situation of life. Amen. And uh, if that's you today, and, and uh, you want to start your faith journey with the Lord, just do me a favor, and would you just text Jesus? Just text Jesus to the number 625-9300. And when you do that, I just want to send you uh, an ebook just to, just to help you in the process of your newfound faith with Christ. It's so important. At this time also, we're going to have our, our prayer response team members that are here. They're going to come down and pray with you today. Our prayer response team members, Pastor Maxine and, and uh, Denise is here. And Pastor Peter is coming as well. And they're going to be here to pray. If you have a need in your body, if you need healing today, let them pray for you. If you, if you just need someone to pray with you about a life decision or you're asking for that wisdom, they're going to be here. They'll pray. They'll agree with you today. For the rest of us today, let me give you a blessing. Lord, I thank you that you bless us on our coming in. You're blessing us on our going out and our lying down and our rising up. I thank you, Lord, that everything we put our hands to, I thank you that you're going to bless it. Because I know that, Lord, you love us. You accepted us. We belong. And I thank you, God, that you have a purpose for our lives in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Have a fantastic week. Remember, expect wisdom. Press into them. Press into them. God bless you.